1998, I think it was, uh, you and your wife, Kate, started a Friday night college ministry in Santa Barbara called Reality. Eight kids were in attendance on that first evening. In the 20 years since, eight more churches have been spawned from that little group that you put together, and you maintained a full-time role as a head pastor for two decades. So tell me about your decision to leave that world and commit full-time to Channel Islands. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. It was kind of a um, slow pendulum swing on, on both sides of it. So prior to 1998, I was full-time at Channel Islands, you know, the, the family business plan was always that I would take over. My dad tells a story that from the time I, he held me when I was a baby and he told my mom, we're going to build this business to give to this boy. Wow. I know. <laughs> I just got goosebumps when I said it. Um, and so that was always a plan my whole life. I just grew up in the surfboard industry in Channel Islands. I was always in the factory or the retail store. Um, I just literally grew up in it. And that was always a plan. And I loved that. Like, this, you know, challenge was started because my parents loved the surfing lifestyle and they love surfers and they love surfboards. They love the joy that surfboards bring to people, that deep connectivity of making something for someone. My parents both experienced that. My dad was making surfboards. My mom was a seamstress. And so while my dad was making boards, she'd be making clothes. And so this experience of like providing meaningful things for people is so much a part of building surfboards. And I sort of took on that ethos very, very early. Um, and I was super into doing the surfboard thing. And I'd done everything you could do at Challenge, from cleaning the shaping rooms, you know, to working in the retail store, to running the shaping machine, the first one we ever had, to shaping, um, to marketing. I did it all. And then, um, you know, I grew up in a Christian home, very strong Christian home. And at some point, my wife and I just had this sort of deep burden for the kids that we surfed with here in our hometown in Carpinteria all the time, that they felt like they were lost and they needed help. And we were looking for a way to help them. And our paradigm is, and was at the time, sort of Christianity. So we just kind of grabbed these kids and started teaching them Bible studies and you know trying to help them and guide them through the crazy teenage years. And that turned into this whole reality thing and all these churches and all that stuff. But that was a slow pendulum swing. So I was kind of doing that thing on the side, the Bible studies and the ministry, but mostly my life was Channel Islands. And then ministry began to demand more and more and more of my time. And there just came this point where it was obvious that I couldn't sustain, my wife and I couldn't sustain doing both. And my parents were very involved in the whole thing. And we all looked at each other one night and we're like, Britt and Kate can't keep doing both of these things. And we really feel like God is calling them to do this ministry thing. So it was really one of the most difficult things in my life because ministry wasn't my dream. Channel Islands was. Um, but I certainly felt that it was something I was supposed to do. And my parents felt the same way. So there was a sense of like, this is cool. There's um, destiny and purpose here. But there's also a great degree of loss because this is what we know and this is what our dreams were around. This is what we want to do. And this is what we've invested in. And this is what we've planned toward. So, you know, long story short, we committed to the ministry. My parents had to go to plan B. Plan B was they were getting near the time of retirement and I was a retirement plan, but with me out of the picture, we need to sell the business. Burton came along and Burton was incredible. That worked out very well for my parents. Um, Burton has always been amazing to Channel Islands. You know, Jake Burton's whole thing was, it was really because Jake Burton was a surfer and he loved Channel Islands growing up. And so for him, it was a passion project. And uh, Burton's a very big company. There's a lot of structures around it, but he used to tell people at Burton, look, don't mess with my surfboard company. Mm. Don't mess with them. So as long as we stay profitable, there wasn't any messing with. Um, and they're very, very helpful the whole time and very, very generous. And um, so fast forward now to the last five years or so, I once again began dabbling in surfboards. And the story is my daughter, Daisy, which we talked about this last time, had cancer and she was dying. And I was having a really, really rough time, obviously, as we all were. And a friend of mine who was one of the kids in those early Bible studies that we started 
um, that I hadn't been close to for a few years since showed up on my doorstep one day and said, hey, man, my dad and I want to build a shaping room for you in your backyard. And I said, dude, I haven't shaped a board in years. Like, what are you talking about? And he said, I know you haven't, but I think you should. I think you need to. Hmm. And he and his dad came to my house and out of their own pockets, they bought all the materials, they built a shaping room in my backyard. And I had to come to the factory and find my old shaping tools. And I went in there and started shaping. And dude, it was like, I, I don't want to overstate it, but it was, um, it was almost salvific for me in the sense that like, that d really deep, difficult place that I was in dealing with my daughter and her um, inevitable passing. Shaping brought me to this place of incredible moments of peace. You know, shaping is one of those focal things, like surfing or hiking or hunting or whatever it is. It's different for everybody, but it's one of those focal activities where it absorbs you wholly and completely, right? Like you're fully in the moment when you're shaping. So I, I didn't have anything like that for a long time. And I just found this incredible place of peace and healing um, and shaping surfboards. And then this also this really, really deep reconnection with who I am and who my family is and something that's in me. It's deeply in my DNA. And um, that was just a really beautiful experience for me. And I was just shaping boards for myself and my son and my wife and friends and stuff. And then Channel Islands noticed and they began to kind of ask me, hey, would you, you know, do some stuff here and there? And so again, it was a slow pendulum swing. It was a slow pendulum swing. And um, my involvement with Channel Islands became fairly tense, intense, excuse me. There was a lot going on and I was, there was a lot going on with the ministry. And I just came for the second point in my life to this realization, like I can't do both of these. And you know what, honestly, it's been an awesome two decades doing ministry and starting all these churches and helping all these people and doing all this stuff. And I'm really, really grateful for that. And I feel like I've done everything that I ever hoped to do there. And I'm not sure that I have much more to give in that realm. I was pretty, you know, I had kind of given everything that I could give. Um, and so I retired from that and then swung the pendulum once again to full-time surfboards. And man, it's been awesome. It's just been so incredible, and it's such a cool full circle story to see it come back around, you know? And I had surrendered it fully, put it on the altar to speak in biblical terms and let it go, and never thought it would come back around. And to see it come back around is incredible. And I was talking with my dad and my mom about it recently, and they just felt like, man, it's just a cool thing that God did for our family. It really worked out well with the Burton thing and it's worked out really well to come back to the family and we're just stoked. It's, it's a, it's a really neat story. I'm really thankful for it.